Hey guys, welcome to Killer Drums. Um, this is a segment that we call Gear Gear Gear. gear, gear. gear. I'm Tony Moore and this is Jackie Barnes in the hot seat. Yes. And we've got some new stuff to show you. Come around and have a look. They're all just reaching for a piece of you. Jackie, what is in the house today? Rogers are back. Rogers, now they're an old brand. Old brand, one of my favorite American brands of drums. Um, I own several vintage Rogers kits and they're amazing drums. Beautiful. Um, so I've been really excited to not only see these, but play them, check them out, have a look at them, see how they're made and kind nice. of see how they kind of stack up against my old kits. The old kits? Yeah. So what sizes have we got? Let's start with our um, sizes today. Yeah. So we've got a uh, 20 inch bass drum, 20 by 14, 12 by 8, and a 14 by 14 floor tom. Nice. So what we would call the downbeat, downbeat sizes. Downbeat kit, cool. Yeah. What's the snare, eh? It looks uh, So deep. we've got a 14 by 6.5 um, uh, Dynasonic. Dynasonic? Yeah, so it's kind of like the reissue Dynasonic with the old, you know, um, the snare bridge and kind of, they've brought that back. Uh, one of the coolest things about Rogers coming back is that they've reissued a lot of the old parts. Ah, uh, for the old, all the guys collecting the vintage gear. Exactly, because you know like you us. find so many you find so many <laughs> shells that people have you know collected and they've pilfered for the parts and they, they yeah. sell off individual components to make more money and yep. so you see a lot of orphan shells out there without any hardware on them. So you can actually Sweet. now put together if you've got a blank you know sixties shell. You can put it together. You know, you can get the hoops, you can get the tension rods, you can get the lugs. Yeah, um, that's priceless, if you've got a, if you've got snares, you know, because a lot of people um, in the you know when when these snares were a thing in the sixties and seventies, a lot of people would remove the snare bridges and then they put them aside and that kind of just get lost in in you know mountains of gear. And so a lot of the old um, diners you'd find were missing the snare bridges. So they've reissued that as well. Yeah. So. Which is important because as we know, it doesn't have a snare bed. Tell us about a snare bed. How important is that? Normally. Normally. So yeah. basically a snare bed is basically, uh, you know, if you look at the bearing edge on the resonant side of a snare drum, uh, where the snare wires sit on the drum, you'll see basically a kind of... Like a scallop a, out, isn't a it? A scallop out of the yeah. shell. Uh, and basically what that does, it allows the, uh, the snare wires to sit evenly and, you know, it kind buzz of in the middle, get a nice the, tone. Get a nice even buzz rather than kind yeah. of, yeah. And so Dynasonic was a little bit unique in that they did one thing different to everyone else at the time, and that was no snare bed. Yep. Which is why it was funny when they'd take the snares, the, the snare mechanism off, um, the drums would buzz and rattle and, yeah. and fart and pop a bit, um, you know. So it's good that they're back. Now this colour. This is a great looking it's color. It's a beautiful kit. Uh, Red Ripple, they call it. And this is one of the launch um, finishes available with the, this, this is called the Rogers Covington uh, right. kit, which is in, you know, homage of the uh, original nice. kind of Covington, Ohio, I think it is. Covington, I think it is Ohio. Ohio. Um, um, how many of these are kind of out here at the moment? In um, Australia, obviously, if you're watching overseas. Initially four came into the country. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is the last one available. Nice. Um, they, they went really quickly, um, snapped up like that. It's a beautiful looking kit. Beautiful looking kit. Um, um, we'll, we popped the head off. We had a look yeah. inside. We'll put a yeah. bit of an insert. You can have a look. And, um, and we'll show you, we'll yeah. talk about a bit, little bit about the shell construction. So these are a three ply shell. Yep. Um, so they're, they're two millimeter solid plies of maple, North American maple and poplar. Yep. So maple, poplar, Which maple. kind of similar to Gresh, perhaps? Yeah, and it's similar poplar. to their, their shells from the 60s as well. It's kind yep. of basically what they've done with this reissue is they've gone back and looked at what they liked about the old shells yep. from that kind of golden era, the so there's 60s. There's a fair, fair bit of nostalgia put into these. Yeah. And there's a lot of love yep. out there for the Rogers kits. They're, they're a gorgeous lot of kits. Love. I mean, I, they're, you know, my, my vintage kits that I own are some of my favorite kits. Hey, wanted to show you something oh, too. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, this segway. is one. A little segue. Yeah. So this is an old one that we, we oh, did wow. up in the shop. You might see that on the channel. So this, is, this was a 15 inch Tom, so this is an original one. So what color was this originally? This is white. So one of the old vinyl wraps? No, it's a Formica, Formica oh, yeah. white. But it had been snapped, so we decided we'd do a project to make it into a snom. So we might throw it on here a bit later. Yeah, and, um, I do but, love a snom. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you got the bridge on there as well. Yeah, cool. put the bridge on. Um, 15 inch drum, this one. So. Now, you'll notice the difference on the inside of this. This is a speckle finish. 
Yeah. And on the other one, it's um, it's lacquered, isn't it? So it's yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll go back into the construction of these a bit more yeah. and um, and talk about the finishes and yeah. Sweet. So okay. Yeah. So ba base. Segway over. Um, we'll go back to that snom a little later on. Um, so basically, with these, yeah. So they've all, so three ply. Uh, sorry, six mil three ply um, maple poplar maple yep. shell with a two mil re ring. Re ring on the inside. So and it's when we were looking, it was about twenty five mil, so about an inch, mm, I mean, about an inch mm. ring, which is similar to the old ones. Pretty similar, yeah. yeah. Uh, but unlike the older drums, which had the grey speckled interiors or the flat grey interiors in yep. the earlier drums. Um, these are, uh, they look like they're stained and then lacquered. So yeah. they, they, they've got quite a heavy lacquering, which yeah. um, I mean, I would personally probably prefer. Uh, just a bit just, of oil. Yeah. Because when, when we put a bit of lacquer, kind of, what in your opinion, what lifts? It brightens up the sound a bit. Yeah. Um, but, um, but you know, that's what they've, they've obviously gone through a lot of testing and found yeah. that that's. And they that love was it. The, and, and that was what they felt got the sound they were after. Yeah. It's had some great um, reviews and they too. And they look gorgeous. Like we opened it, it up and, and it, it looks great on the inside as yeah. well. Beautiful work. Now tell me, um, who's making them? Okay, so it's a, you know, basically Rogers after they kind of, um, you know, f shut down in the 70s, late 70s I think it was, um, they've kind of, there's been a couple of kind of attempted resurrections, so yeah. to speak, of the brand. I think it was Yamaha did one years ago and it didn't really kind of go anywhere and, and a couple of years ago it got taken over by Reliance. Okay. So Reliance, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, are a Taiwanese company. They make uh, Dixon drums, mm -hmm. uh, Gibraltar hardware is their main brand yep. uh, and the Reliance factory actually makes shells for a lot of companies. Yeah. Right. Um, so basically these shells are made there yep. in Taiwan. Uh, using premium woods, uh, yep. they're using so high quality timbers. US kind of timbers, ship yep. to yep. overseas. High quality. So it's still a yep. good shell. So you're still getting your North American maple, yep. you're getting like high quality timber. Yep. Uh, they're making the shells at the Reliance factory yep. and shipping them just as a raw shell to California, uh, yep. Canoga Park I think it is, and Bill Dedimore from Pork Pie Drums who's a, a great drum maker. He's a great craftsman too, yeah. so looking, even just looking at the shells when we pulled it apart, um, you can see that he's he's got good attention to detail. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice looking edges and yeah. Um, so he does the edges. You know, fits all the hardware, finishes the shells. Yeah. And I checked. Um, I got a screwdriver and checked yeah. the tension on all the lugs. It weren't too he, tight. No, yeah. he's got them backed off nicely. Good job, mate. Well yeah. done. So basically, what what we're talking about there is the the lug itself. When when you know put on the drum, uh, your kind of natural tendency is to just crank it tight so it doesn't yeah. move. But in actual fact, what you're doing there is hindering the resonance yeah. of the shell. So we can demonstrate on the cymbal. So I'll, you, you hit the cymbal just, and I'll, I'll clamp it as tight as I can. You'll hear yeah. what it does. Okay. Now, as I loosen the tension, it starts to ring and resonate. And then I take it off and it rings freely. Yeah. So similar principle. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, when you're working with thin shells, yeah. um, you don't want extra kind of, you know, deadening of the shell so no, no. Uh, and these are already a, a big lug you know so uh, you yep. don't want them over tight um yeah so yeah bill's done a great job putting these together um th they they look gorgeous um I, I really love the finish i think it's a beautiful looking drum and i noticed you you were telling me the um reissue of some of the hardware yeah so not only have they reissued um, a bunch of the parts like the lugs and tension rods and all that sort of stuff yeah uh, even the the snare strainer they've done a new version of the clock face strainer nice um, they've done a full range of hardware so yep. you'll see we've got the the straight cymbal stand here. And I love the little butterfly kind of looking. Yep, and they're great wings. because, you know, when you loosen them, they spin around so you can yeah, kind get of, them out of the way. get out of the way. The, the swan leg design is kind yeah, of like a nice. throwback to the old hardware from the 60s and 70s. And it's, um, actually, I was looking before, and if you just look down here, you'll see the swan leg, how it just take, takes in underneath that shell. So it enables you to get your tom right over. Yeah. This little swan just down here like that. Um, it's only a, a gentle thing, but it, it actually helps. You yeah, know? and they're super lightweight. Um, really, yeah, they're, they're great. They, they look yeah. great. They work great. Um, and you showed me that pedal too, the bass yep. drum pedal. Was... So we'll, we'll put up some photos while we're talking of, of uh, the hi-hat stand and the pedal because they've reissued those, um, and they're fantastic. So the bass yeah. drum pedal, um, a couple of features I really love about it is that... Um, Can we nip it off? Yeah, why not? It's actually got a um, really cool quick release mechanism. Let's see how quick. One Mississippi, 
to Mississippi. Oh, yeah. he's done. So, Show him the mech first. That's that, The mechanism's really cool. So there's a very cool looking pedal. You can see that kind of almost like a tapered yeah. footboard. Really comfortable to play. Uh, you've got your toe guard here that is removable. Yep. Here's that quick mechanism here. So basically what you do is you get it lined up on your on your hoop yep. and that just flicks shut. That's so cool. I love that. And and basically if you if you tighten it and it's not tight enough, you just loosen it, you give that a little bit yep. of a tighten and then bang. That's great. And that's just it's so easy. And now you're also showing me height adjustment. So let's say we've got a 20 inch kick drum yep. or we're playing a 24. So say you're playing a 24, if you look at this bar here and it's kind of slotted as well, so yep. it doesn't spin Rotate. around. So you can actually yeah. Raise that Nuts. if you're playing a 26 or a 24, yeah. even a 28, you know? Yeah. Because um, you do find old, like, marching drums out there, 28s yeah. and stuff. And well, i got a 30-inch I'll have to yeah. show you one day. So I've, I've got that set nicely for the 20. That's good. And um, why is it important to have that raised? So what difference is when you when your beat is hitting down from centre as yeah. opposed to back in centre, what kind of sound does it... It's basically if you if you're hitting lower on the head yep. or to, more towards the edge, you're going to get a thinner sound. Yeah, it's not going to be full, nice and no solid. bottom end. It's Would gonna, it kind of if we like hit? Yeah, it's kind of like you know you're not going to get a full sound, but you'll get yep. like a. Yeah. You'll get a, you'll get a mixture of overtones as well. There's not too many who do that. No. Uh, the other thing also the which was always one of my favorite things about the old Rogers pedals was this um the, ah, yeah, the way reverse. that they've yeah. the way that they've designed the spring there so you can actually just lean down and adjust that on the fly <laughs> that's great and you don't have to you know um take the pedal off or kind of reach under um, imagine making this back in the 60s or yeah. 50s whenever it was and, and you wow. know and the the obviously the improvement now is that they've um you know gotten rid of that little plate yeah that was in there that, <laughs> that it like oh, every every time you get one of the old ones i actually bought one of the old pedals and then about a week later, I was like, where's that plate gone? And it is just gone. It's, and it's they're, they're impossible to find, and then you can't <laughs> attach it to the bass drum. So, yeah. you know, they've basically modernized it well. Um, that little simple cam there with the single, yep. with the single chain you can't works really great. Yeah. But you can do a strap, yeah. You can just take that off and you can buy a little, uh, the same cam, just a little wider with a leather strap. Beautiful. Um, and and how you know, do you find the feel difference between the, the chain and the leather? A little heavier. Yeah, the, the the strap just makes it a little speedy, a little faster. Because okay. this is actually, for what it is, it's it's quite a heavy feeling pedal. Yeah, and and I like that. But um, my one at home that I've got of these, I did put the strap on just to to try it, and it yep. sped it up a little bit. Yeah, great. Um, great pedal. Um, really nice. cool. It's um, it's just a really you know, timeless design. I really like the the way it, it, it looks like the old. Pedals. Yeah, it does. It looks just like um, And they've done the same footboard for the hi-hat hi -hat. stand. And it's got a little bit of an adjuster, I yep. can see. A little bit of adjustment. Just You've down got, there. Yeah. There's a tension, so you can actually... Yeah. I think we do something. Oh, there we go. We actually just lift. I've lowered it. I don't know how to get up, Jackie. That's your job. What's that? <laughs> I've lowered it now. Yeah, and, and the other cool thing I like about... We'll take this off. Oh, is yeah, that's cool. The hi-hat clutch. So you get can it nice see. and close and have a look. So I'll tell you, show you how easy it is to take this apart. So you don't have to actually really do anything. I'm just going to loosen off this one, touch yeah. on there. But really, all you do is just see that you just pull it off. That's so cool. It's got a little quick release mechanism. So I'll take yeah, the nice. I'll take the hi hat off and I'll just show you how that works. So you've got this little notch here, and basically when you put it back on, you just press that in, clips on there. Very cool. And that's not going anywhere and then love it pull it off that's great it's, it's a cool design so um they've really you know for me they, they've done some really good things with the hardware uh you've got the tom stand there as well yep so that's um, you said the basket's a bit smaller on that yeah yeah so it's it's actually designed for 12, specifically 13s. for the rogers drum so 12s and 13s perfect it's not really designed for any other sizes it yep. doesn't go too small too big yeah um, and they've kind of incorporated the same like ball joint that you see on Gibraltar stands. Yeah, right. Yep. So that, that kind of omni yeah. omni ball kind now of feature. Now you mentioned there's some retro parts now. Yeah. And you were saying they can fit in with the old hex parts. For yeah, those. Exactly. So, so for those yep. guys out there with some Rogers yep. gear like Jackie and I, and yep. we've sort of flogged out our Swivomatic areas on the yep. old stands. Yeah. There's some retrofit parts. Yeah. So you can get the the. Uh, a tom arm with yep. that ball joint as well for added kind of maneuverability yeah, um 
another cool thing they've done on these reissues is, is that they've done uh, it, it is an option yeah but they come standard with aluminium uh or aluminum if for our american aluminum um, aluminium floor tom legs and yep. aluminium uh, spurs on oh, yep. the base little gull wing kind of looking yeah. spurs so just to lighten the weight a little bit yeah um, and they've kind of mimicked the old plate haven't they yeah. with, the, with the mount on the yeah so they've, they've well. redesigned the mount for the floor tom legs you'll yeah. if you zoom in on that you'll see it's kind of like a almost matching the clock face of the snare strainer yep. that's what they've um, inspired by yeah, whereas cool. you know on the old 60s drums you needed a drum key on both sides yeah, and so irritating. and the hex legs you know so <laughs> so this is just kind of like a new that's good you, know, it, you, you can retrofit these as well so you yeah. can buy the the floor tom leg mount separately as well so yeah. i like that they've got a full range of stuff that yeah. if you just can't find any of the old hardware yeah you can put keeps your, the love you, alive doesn't it exactly yeah um, and one one last thing i noticed there was they've got gaskets i think you mentioned they yeah got they've little, added little rubber gaskets now yeah, between right. the lug and the and the shell. And when we were sitting down on the couch, we, th we thought, are those lugs bigger? They did but look a little we, bigger. But then when we yeah. came up close, we realized that was just that little outline of the, of the gasket kind of. Yeah. And just looking bit. back to our old drum here, I mean, uh, I brought it in just because it, this is an original. Um, and I just wanted to see, and it, it is pretty close, isn't it? Like, yeah. they've really, they've done such a great job of, you know, it's literally, I'd be pretty happy with um, yeah. um, a nostalgic kit like mm. this. Well, it's one of those things, I mean, you, you quite often find a, a vintage kit and you, you get it and you pull it apart and you realise that over time, random tension rods have made their way onto the drum and different yeah. lengths and stuff. So you can get yourself a nice, fresh set of tension rods. Yeah. To me, there's no shame in putting new tension no. rods on, a, on an old drum. Well, we want um, to keep them going. Yeah. There's no point. And um, mm -hmm. the, the other thing they did as well is they also, not only this lug, but they reissued the bread and butter lug, which was the ah, earlier. Ah, cool. That's the old brass. They were the, they were oh, the earlier man. ones that um, had a Broke. tendency to crack. Um, Add and a whole kit and a whole lot cracked. <laughs> so you can get the bread and butter lugs I Sold now. it. It's yeah. too late. No, oh, <laughs> they can, we, You can call can him and tell call him he can get it. Can I get those things? <laughs> Um, you know, so they've, they've really done a, a nice job kind of honouring the past. Yeah, nice. Um, I think they've done a great job. The kit looks really lovely. Yeah. The only thing left is to really hear it. Yep. But um, I love that you also brought back in your favourite cymbals again. My UFIPs, yep. Yeah, let's do a quick rundown on those so we yeah. know what we're listening to. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, for, for a long time now, whenever I've kind of gone into shops and seen UFIPs in the store, I've always been drawn to uh, the natural series. So these yep. are all naturals, um, which are defined by that iconic red yep. badge. You've got the red natural series badge. Um, you know, they're, they're dark, but not too dark. Yeah. They've still got a good amount of like projection, but they're not in your face. Like yep. they're not too in your face. They're, they're not they're... aggressive. No. Nah. Yeah. Um, but so, they can bark if you need them to. Yeah. You know, like these hats, these are the 15 inch natural light hats. Yeah. Um, these are the hats that I use with, with dad's band. Yeah. With, with Jimmy Barnes. Um, so these are the, the hats that I use. Um, you know, they, they're able to play, you know, funk stuff, soul stuff, but they're all, they can also rock. Yeah. Uh, nice. They're a bit of an all rounder. Um, 19 inch natural crash there. Yep. Uh, funny when I got this one, it had the old big logo there rather than the, you oh, know, right. these ones had oh, yeah, the, yeah. the newer style logo. So, yep. Um, that's quite, quite cool. Uh, 19 inch crash, 21 inch crash ride, yep, beautiful. Um, and a 20 inch crash there. So nice. The natural series, they're they're great all rounders. Um, they were a series that I was always drawn to. Whenever I would see UFIPs, I would, I would hit them, and I would always kind of go back to the the natural series. They were kind of um, yeah, they're, they're great. Do you want to hear them? I want to hear them. I want to hear them. We'll, all do right. our, we'll do our usual test on the on yeah. the yeah. Do it. Do a test. I guess get, this get that on way. there. Eat you. There we go. All right. Nice, nice sound on that. Yeah. They've got Ooh. good projection, but they're not too in your face. Like yeah. They're, they're... Yeah, yeah they're that's nice. Really, and yeah, foot, got a yeah. great foot sound. Yeah. I'm just looking at the bell. Yeah. 
And you can actually see the veins when they rotocast them. Yeah, so like obviously UFIBs are, are rotocast symbols and they're yeah. the only company doing that. Yeah, um, so explain quickly what rotocast is to our viewers. So rotocast basically you've got, oh, oh, 99% of symbol makers, it starts with like a little uh, ingot, ingot yep. which is then molten, made to a molten state. It's pressed out and flattened and yep. cooled and then shaped and they, they usually make the bell, they press the bell in and yep. kind of form it that way, then they shape it, hammer it, lay it, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, UFIP do it differently. They have a big rotocast, which is a big kind of cast that's in the shape of the symbol already. Uh, and that's spinning at a at a really kind of high speed and they're pouring the molten metal into it so it's being spun out yep. into the shape of the symbol from the get-go. So what that does is it shoots out the, any impurities in the bronze, yep. um, little air bubbles and stuff like that, pushes them out. And, then, yep. and when it comes out of the rotocast, the bell is fully formed. So yes. you don't have to actually press the press bell it, or yeah. hand make so the bell. So it's very much like the old, like actual bell making, as mm -hmm. in a yeah. bell. Yeah. And they would cast, and they didn't. Ro yep. They wouldn't rotocast bells back in the day. Mm. But um, I often explain rotocasting like anyone who's done um, pottery making, mm -hmm. and you've got a table slab yeah, of, yep. and then as it's spinning, you're you're forming it into one consistent shape. Yeah. Whereas when it's an ingot that's been spread, the molecular yeah. structure yep. is changing. Yep. Um, and this ha this has more of a musical note. Yep. Then, uh, in my opinion, yeah. what and, do you and, think? and as soon as they come out of the cast, they already sound like, like a, symbol, a symbol, and yeah. the bells sound like a bell. Yeah, you know, there there are no bells like UFIP bells. Yeah, They're, absolutely. You know, like especially for a rock player like myself, yeah, that plays in front of big crowds, that needs that bell to cut through in choruses and stuff. And yeah, I, I like to I like to ride the bell. Yeah. That Speaking of the ride, what's that one? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I keep just <laughs> twenty-one inch crash I'm, ride. I'm loving all these things. Yeah, there it is. But then it's then it's glassy and sweet when you get out to the outer edge, and and being a crash ride, it's a little thinner. Yeah. So, like that's just as nice as a crash as it is a ride. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a gorgeous symbol. And then the twenty-inch crash. You know that they're, they're just beautiful symbols. They're not too overpowering yeah um i tend to like symbols that are you know they're there and then they kind of yeah. get out of the way they don't kind of you know especially you know with the way overhead mics are these days yeah um yeah. you know i like using symbols that you can actually a bit more musical yeah that you can actually in mix into a mix with the mics you know yeah. like um rather than just having to pull out overheads yeah, because they're like so loud <laughs> every every rock mixer yeah. goes all right there's all the drums down yep <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, these are these are really beautiful symbols, and I find they complement a lot of different kits that I own. Yeah, well, we're um, going to try them on a few yeah. kits tonight. Yeah, yeah, we are. See how they go. So. Um, and then we are, so these drums come standard with Remo USA heads. Yep. They come with uh, ambassadors top and bottom. Yep. So coated. Wh why did we change them? So I fa I found with these I wasn't loving the coated on the bottom resos. Yeah. Um, and I, I was I was the same basically. We tuned it. It sounded great, but it it just wasn't as good as what we were hoping it would sound straight away. So when we realised there was a coated head on the bottom, we decided we'd flip it out. And Jackie's chosen. These are his his heads that he uses. So basically, with the toms, I wanted to put on the heads that I would put on yeah. this drum, uh, and that's um, Evan, well. Evans UV twos. Yeah, um, they're a great head. I, I have them in, on a lot of my drums, yeah. and they sound great. A beautiful tone um, of of the those yeah. heads, and I've got a clear it. G1 yeah. on the bottom. Just and that's nice. definitely brightened up, didn't it? It did, it, and yeah. not only that, it kind of I found that, uh, especially this 14 floor tom, it had that kind of you know, yeah, just some it, overtones we just couldn't get. It, just, it needed to come to get, life. Yeah, we couldn't get the overtone. There was an overtone there that was now we're we're running uh, Royer microphones here, so they're mm. a ribbon microphone. They're very warm, but we just couldn't quite get it and so we had to work a little bit harder i think the coated rezo just especially with a 14 deep floor tom like yeah. a 14 by 14 that extra air in there yeah the coated um rezo i found it just um there was just too much attack yeah and not enough body yeah so and and like any any of our drums i mean jack and i got lots and lots of drums 
And um, I mean, Jackie's probably got most of them with Evans on already, don't you? Yeah, generally. yeah, yeah, generally, and there, and there, there are some that I don't, and yeah. um, it just depends on the drum. Um, I, yeah. I find that this combo works on most things. Most yeah. things for me. Yeah. I'm able to get a comfortable sound, not only a, a comfortable sound, but a comfortable drum to hit and, and feel for, for the way well. I hit drums. Um, They're a lovely head. Yeah. Um, whereas I mean, I've got a couple of kits that I just love the sound of a Remo fiber skin, perhaps, mm -hmm. yep. and I've set them up and recut edges and stuff just for that yeah, to suit yeah, that yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of where I'm going with this is that we, we tried both and these re worked really well with the Evans. So yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of working well, how about we hear them all? Should we hear it? Yeah, for it? Yeah. Loving it. I'll go Let's grab a seat on the lounge. I'll leave my little Tom here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should I hit it? You can hit it if you want. <laughs> On here it is a Tom as well. These are fun to play. That was fun. Good sounding drums, it. man. Hey, the cymbals sat really well. Yeah. Really well. In fact, I, I found that, I felt that the cymbals actually made the kit have more presence about it as yeah. well. So yeah. yeah, really nice. Really nice. Oh man, well, well this is awesome. Well, Rogers are back. This kit. Rogers, Rogers, are back. Rogers, Rogers. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what they, how, how far they can take this. Cause obviously this is the, the first offering yep. and there's only a few finishes um, and, and there's certainly some other things I would like to see them do. So um, yeah. let's see what, what they come up with. There's definitely a revival of the old vintage stuff. Yeah, you, you've so seen it with um, yeah, DW obviously Sonal. taking um, Slingerland. Yes, true. So they've, yep. they've, they've got that now and, and we'll see what happens with that in the future. You've got um, obviously your... Um, Sonal Vintage is kicking Sonal out. Vintage has come back. Uh, you got the Pearl um, yes. 75th anniversary coming out this yeah. year, which um, the phenolic shells. That's yeah, going to be cool. Yeah, we want to do that. That's yeah. going to be good. So um, there's, what have we got? Broadcaster? Broadcaster. So there's a, there's you know, quite a push now, isn't there? Like, um, and and of know. the Gretsch stuff, you know, we're, we're going to be playing some Gretsch in another video as well. And yeah. the broadcasters, are, they're beautiful. Um, awesome. We'll do, we should do something on my old superstars as well. Yes. Yes, we'll do, an, we'll do, we might do a retro kind of a series. Retro a day. Retro day. <laughs> Starting today. Today is retro day. 
Awesome, Jackie. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing this. This is Killer Drums TV. Mr. Jackie Barnes, I'm Tony Moore. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.